<clears throat> Hi there. I wanted to take a little time to talk to you tonight about cerebral spinal fluid leaks. I suffer from Tarlosis disease and my Tarlosis disease is systematically caused by Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which is a genetic mutation disorder in which the collagen building blocks for my body are not quite right and that leads to things like fragile tissues, uh, my numerous cysts, easy bruising, varicose veins, basically anything in the body where a valve is involved, that valve can become weak, uh, veins are weak, skin is weak, tears easily, um, things like acid reflux even because of the valve and the sphincter that allow the acid to come back up into the esophagus. Um, there's numerous things that are caused by Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and it is what systematically causes my cyst. Well, that fragility also makes me more likely to have CSF leaks. And so, there's really, you know, you can have two conditions with your CSF system that are abnormal. You can have high pressure or low pressure. I actually suffer from high pressure all the time. And I will tell you, especially if you have had recent surgery in which your dura has been opened or your spinal fluid system has been breached, such as an epidural or a spinal tap, um, you really need to get your doctor involved if you have any kind of headaches because there are traditional things that we can do to kind of self-diagnose what's going on but truly there are some cases that don't make much sense and that actually happened to me um, and my need to have emergency surgery and I'll tell you about that at the end but basically what you're looking at when you have a CSF leak is usually a headache. And the key thing to know about that headache is that if it's a CSF leak, more than likely, if you lay down and that headache goes away, and then as soon as you get up or rise up, not even, you know, say you lay down in the bed, as soon as you raise up, you know, 45 degrees or to a seated position, if that headache comes back and then you repeat and lay back down and it goes back to normal again to where the headache relieves, more than likely you have the conditions for a CSF leak and you should go to the emergency room or um, you should go ahead and get your surgeon involved because anytime you have a headache after having spinal surgery or any kind of spinal procedure, you should be calling the doctor that was involved. High pressure is a completely different ball game. I suffer from high pressure. My pressure causes me to have a headache that I much compare to the old carnival games where you try and ring the bell with the big sledgehammer and it's like my head is the bell and the sledgehammer is hitting the dinger that goes up to the bell and it hits so hard that the bell goes flying off into the air. That's what one of those headaches feels like to me. It is totally debilitating, put me in the floor, on my knees kind of pain. And truthfully, the most often time it occurs is when I'm on the toilet. It's if I have to move my bowels and I have to exert any kind of pressure, it will cause me to get a horrible headache if my pressure is hovering around the set point for me and my body. The headache is not like any other headache I have because I suffer from Chiari malformation, so I have Chiari headaches. I suffer from migraines. I suffer from cluster headaches. I have a headache more days than I do not. 
but a pressure headache is a completely different ball game because usually it comes on really really fast and it will go away as soon as whatever I'm doing like exertion positional change goes away now it's a different ball game if you actually are suffering from undiagnosed intracranial hypertension which is what I did back in 2009 and I had basically a constant debilitating headache for two and a half months until my spinal fluid pressure was relieved. That's a totally different ball game. Um, it's just a constant headache that you can't get away from. Nothing will touch it, no pain meds, but it wasn't to the point of where it would put me in the floor like a sudden pressure increase will. But here's the thing, when I had my surgery last September and I returned home within 24 hours, I started having complications. I had been in Dallas for almost 10 days after surgery and literally I didn't have hardly any problems and then when I came home, I started getting a huge amount of swelling over my incision area. There were actually like three different pockets of swelling and I had an MRI and two of the pockets were seromas but the third they really couldn't tell. And I felt incredibly bad because my surgeon in Dallas and I talked on the phone and I was incredibly pig-headed because he was afraid that I had a leak. And I was convinced that I didn't because I had every symptom of having high pressure. In fact, my pressure got so high that any kind of bending, just the skin moving against my back, would cause me to start having so much pressure on my brain itself that my heart started being affected, my breathing started being affected, my parasympathetic nerves parasympathetic nervous system was shutting down. That's how bad it got. And that was on the plane to Dallas to go have surgery because my symptoms got so bad and I had talked to my surgeon and I had realized that something had to happen. I didn't know what was going on, but something had to happen. And what was happening was I did have a leak, but my CSS system had basically just emptied into my sacral area and so I still had some sense of integrity to my CSF system it just wasn't where it was supposed to be and so that's why I stress if you have had anything to do with your CSF system whether it be surgery, spinal tap, epidural, whatever and you start developing a headache you can use the guidance that I've told you to diagnose if it's a leak as far as laying down and stuff. But you always need to get your doctor involved because sometimes it doesn't make sense. And it was my own pig-headedness with my surgeon that put me in an incredibly dangerous position. And when we got in there, I had a leak at my S1. It was not an area that had been worked on but it was my Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and the fragility of my tissues. And so once I had that closed up and had that surgery, everything was okay. But it was a very scary situation. It is the closest to death I have ever came. There are several uh, key attitudes that changed in me because of that experience. But I can't stress enough getting your surgeon involved or if you've had a neurologist do a spinal tap or something, getting them involved anytime you have a headache. I hope this has been informative for you. Please give me your feedback and your comments. I welcome them. And keep tuning in for my videos. I have several that I want to make. Thank you.